All right, so now that we understand about method, let's talk about return types. We see here, so let, let's look at how the method is constructed, per se, the syntax of method. So we have public, okay, we'll talk more about public and all that at a later time. With public, static, void, and then the name of the method. And depending uh, whether we have a parameter, we're passing in some data, all right? We'll have the type of data always. It's important to remember that always start with the type and then the name of the variable in this case, right? Primary. Now let's talk about return type. Well, a return type tells the system, tells Java, tells the compiler that the, the method we're talking about, whether it's going to return something, right? So we should expect something being returned from it or not. So when you say void, right? This keyword void means that the method in in question is not going to return anything. There are times when we need to return, say, an integer. Return an integer. In this case, let's take the example that we have here, which is the add nums, right? So it's a method that adds two numbers and then shows the result. So this works fine as we saw earlier, systeming out the sum of these two integers that we pass in. As we see here, so add numbers, we're passing four and five, and we get nine okay but this method is still a void method which means it really doesn't return anything in order for us to make this method return something because look we all we need all this method needs to do is literally just take two numbers whatever we pass in here and add them and then just return the result so what do we need to do here we need to do a few things first of all we have to change the signature type which means we need to tell the system the compiler that hey this method here is not just void this method will and should it's a contract return an integer in this case that's what we need so we're gonna say here int now we have a problem here if you have it over here it says missing return type well because it turns out if you say that you want to change this method to have a return to return something well you better have an actual return statement here well, return is just a return, and what are we going to return? We can say return A plus B. It's a statement, just close like that. Let's go and comment that out. Let's say something you probably haven't seen it. Okay, this may look very confusing. What are we doing here? Essentially, we're saying, well, it would have been the same if we had said something like this. Int result is equal to zero. Okay, and then we say result is going to be equal to a plus b and then we just take that result and we pass and we return like that it's the same thing as doing a plus b let's just keep the way it is right now let's save this now check this out if we save and run nothing's gonna happen and you may say well but i did but we, we called it here, so it's add numbers, and there it is. And we have the result, but why isn't it showing? Well, the reason it's not showing, remember, is that now we've changed things. First of all, we did comment out the system that out, because now we're just returning the result, the integer, because again, we remember the moment you say int as a type, then you have to return an integer. That's why we have here int result, and we initialize it to zero or we could just not have anything but i like always to initialize it okay either way so now we know that int is going to be uh, results going to be an integer which is exactly what we need so we are putting the the addition the the sum of a plus b which is exactly what we have passed here so the sum is going to be into the result here variable and then we're returning it okay now the reason why, again, going back, the reason why we're not seeing anything in our console here is because, well, we have to system it out because now what's happening, we are just returning the value. We're not systeming it out. We're not showing it. It's the value is there. It's just that we're not showing. The beauty here, we can actually now go ahead and say system that out, that print ln, and we can just pass this whole thing here inside here. Save this and run, should have nine.
and you may think, oh man, this is awesome, this is great. And it is amazing because now you notice this whole thing here, it's returning the result. Which also means we could have done the following. We could have said, for instance, int final result is equal to add nums and pass in four and five, something like that. And then take this final result and just put it here and run, we'll get the same result. You notice now we have this whole flexibility thing that we, 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 we didn't have before. Because now we can literally, knowing that the add nums, it's returning an integer, we could even go ahead here and say, check this out, say plus 10, because this is all an integer, right? That's what we said here. It's returning a plus b, which is coincidentally is an integer. Now we can actually take this whole result and add 10. If you save this, look what's going to happen. 19. Yes, because 4 plus 5 is 9, plus 10 is 19. We can keep adding 45, save, and there we go, and so forth. Okay? So that's very helpful when we started to uh, compartmentalize our code. Get rid of that, save that. All right. Now, the same way we have this uh, return, uh, return an integer, right? The signature is an integer here. Well, the, the type of this method is an integer. We could do the same, obviously. You've seen that before. We can do the same with strings. Let me get rid of this. Uh, let me get rid of this. So we got rid of that method. Okay, so now we can go ahead and return. keep saying return, return string. So how would you do that? Say public, static, string. Yes, you guessed it, so it has to be string. And we're gonna say, let's say full name. In this case, let's go ahead and pass a few parameters here because that's what we've been doing. Let's say then string, you're gonna call first name, and let's say string, last name. Look at it again, we have an issue here. It says missing the return type. So what we can go ahead and do, say return, what do you want to do? We can just go straight to it and say, say first name, because that's what we're passing, plus we're concatenating, right? And say last name, statement like that. Now I know that this full name is going to receive or pass in the first name, Last name, so two strings, and then we're going to take those and put into a return statement here, and then we will should see a concatenated first name and last name. So now we're going to call this full name here. Let's copy this and call he call it here. Say full name, and right away tells us this method takes in two strings, first name and last name. Very very helpful. So enter, and let's say here. George the man, something like that. Now, if we run this, we should see, run, nothing, right? You guessed it. That means this, we're still returning everything, but we have to system out because this is just like a variable, right? It's all being returned in, in a single variable. So we have to system that out. So we can either go ahead and say system that out, that print ln, and then take all of that. put inside here. Save, run, we should see George the man. There we go. Okay, very nicely done. Very, very nice. And of course, you guessed it, you can do the same thing to other types here. We can go ahead and say, for instance, we want a, a char, a character. Okay. So say return and return a character, so what do you know? So, so what do you do? Say public, static, char, my char, say show char, something like that, 
and let's pass in has to be char like that. Let's pass in a char char. Call it C. Okay. Can the return C something like that. All right. So this is a type char. Now if you go show char, copy this. Say system not out not print ln. We can say so pass in some method. We have to pass in a let's say B. All right. So run. We should see B. If you want to change this to let's say D, run, we should see D. All right. Return types are amazing because now we are able to use them for uh, with our methods. Um, so to make sure they're, they're a little bit more flexible and uh, they do exactly what we want them to do. So we have, which is the idea of having a method, right? You want to create a method so that you have this chunk of code that does something and then returns something that we need to use somewhere, right? It could be that we are using this show char here um, in a different class or in a different other method somewhere. In fact, we are using in a different method, which is our main method, right? So, but now if you look, if you forget about anything that we did, you look, it looks much, uh, m much more organized and beautiful, right? Because now we know we just show, you know, show char we pass in D and we know it's going to do exactly that. So we we don't need to think of the implementation of show show char, which means we can literally take this all these methods here, put a uh, and send to somebody and they don't need to know what really is happening inside of a method, but they can use it because they know that this method here is it's called show char and it it needs to um to have some parameters. In this case, we pass an ID and does something. That's all. So again, we are abstracting, we're starting to abstract certain things uh, as we code to make our code a little bit more, less messy and more flexible. Okay. And we'll see more as we talk about classes and other abstractions when it comes to uh, Java programming. All right. Oh, great. So go ahead and play around with this. And as you know, by now, there are many different types, right? Variable types or types in Java. So go ahead and use them. For instance, we, we, we use the void uh, type method here. We use the integer. We use the string. So returns a string. We use a char, returns a char, a character in this case. And we still have others such as Boolean. Right, so go ahead and 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 work with those. Create a method that returns a boolean. Create another method that returns a float or a double. Right, so the sky's the limit. So go ahead and experiment with all of that. Okay, great, good job. I'll see you in the next video.